people often wonder if they're creative. So here's a quick test. What do you see? This one's pretty hard, so I'll make it a bit easier. Now what do you see? How many of you saw this? And how many of you saw this? Ladies and gentlemen, you have just experienced a mental shift. Creativity is now here. And that little shift is evidence that you can access your creativity. So to set the stage, let's look at a new definition of creativity. Creativity is problem solving plus passion. Creativity is the force that propels and elevates our lives. Anytime you passionately go over, under, around, or through an obstacle to create something new, that's creativity. Funnily, the evidence of creativity is all around us, yet it often slips through our fingers. The problem is that we've never properly been taught how to access our creativity. That's why so many people throw up their hands and give up on trying to find or maximize their creativity. Trust me, I seriously doubted my creativity in my youth. And today, I teach creativity at Yale University and have the privilege of coaching musicians, artists, and leaders on how to find their creative flow and spread it through the world. The big shift in my thinking on creativity occurred on March 16, 2007. I'll never forget that day because I woke up in a stark white windowless room hooked up to 17 tubes, the ICU of New York's Weill Cornell Hospital. I looked up and there was my mother holding a chocolate cake. Happy birthday, sweetheart, she whispered to me with tears in her eyes. You've come back to us. You see, 11 days earlier, after a five-minute procedure at a doctor's office, I contracted sepsis, a nearly fatal blood infection. I was rushed to the hospital, and I had four emergency surgeries in three days. My life hung in balance, and I almost died laying in a coma for nearly 10 days until I woke up on my birthday. At this point in my life, I was stuck, not only physically, but also mentally. Creativity was something that I longed for from my teenage years. As the daughter of Holocaust survivors who came to this country seeking a better life, I fully bought into the idea that education was the key to success, and I dove into my studies. I dutifully became a lawyer and led a busy and productive life. But as the years passed, I had the nagging feeling that I was living my life in black and white and that the creatives were the ones living in color. Before landing in the hospital, I began to explore my creativity through playing the piano and volunteering in the arts. And I even found the courage to leave the law. But I was enormously frustrated because I could not figure out how to properly channel my creativity. So when I woke up in the hospital on my birthday, there was no doubt that I had come back for a reason, and that reason had something to do with creativity. A few months later, after another major surgery, it finally came to me. I had been given a second chance in life to help people find their creativity and spread it through the world. So if you think you're not creative, or if you're a creative who thinks you've plateaued, I'm here to tell you that nothing is further from the truth. Today, we're going to crack the code on creativity and unveil the secret to living your life full blast. To get us started, we need to debunk the common myths that typically block people from accessing or maximizing their creativity. Here's myth number one. Creativity is just for artists. Actually, it's for everyone. When you're at work, developing a new app or launching a new product, that's creativity. Or when you're at home, inventing new recipes or woodworking or redecorating a room, that's creativity too. And you don't have to be an artist to do any of those things. So on to myth number two, the myth that creativity is the flash in the pan eureka genius moment. Nope. Creativity is a complex process of problem solving. Do you remember the start of the COVID pandemic when we had a terrible shortage of personal protective equipment? 
Well, teenagers in high school robotics clubs tapped into their creativity to solve this problem, and they used their 3D printers to make face shields. It took many weeks to come up with the process and many hours to manufacture the face shields. And in the end, these young people were cranking out thousands of face shields for our essential workers. Take artists. They solved the problem of how to fill the empty page or the empty stage. And creative problem solving comes up in places you might not suspect, like when you replant a garden or reorganize your closets to maximize your space. That's creativity, along with a big dash of passion, because passion is the spark that keeps you going. And that feeling from passion leads us to myth number three, the myth of the mad, miserable creative. Think Vincent van Gogh, the world-famous artist who cut off his ear and languished in an asylum in the south of France. But to the contrary, research from positive psychology tells us that creativity is associated with many aspects of psychological happiness, including that burst of positive emotions you experience when you're being creative. And creativity is full blast living, in the words of psychologist Mihai Csikszentmihalyi. And that feeling of fulfillment that you derive from being creative is another indicator of your happiness. Now, the good folks at NASA, our space agency, further debunked the myth of the miserable creative in an experiment where they tested the creative capacity of children. NASA developed a test to measure the creative potential of their engineers and their ability to come up with innovative solutions. The test involved a type of creativity known as divergent thinking. That's when you come up with as many ways as possible to solve a problem, no matter how wild or crazy. Like how many ways can you use a paperclip? The test was given to 1,600 curious little four- and five-year-olds, children who find pure joy in coming up with new and creative ideas. And the result of this experiment? 98% of those children scored as creative geniuses. Sadly, by the time we're adults, just 2% of us score in the creative genius category. So here's the thing. Creativity is not something new to you. You were born with it. It may be laying dormant, but it's still there. So now that you know that creativity is available to everyone, that it takes many different forms, and that it can lead to your happiness, the question is, how can you find it? I'm going to show you right now. Prepare to take a journey inside yourself. So please, take a look at this relaxing beach scene. Sit back in your chairs, take a nice deep breath, and close your eyes, and go back to a time when you were doing something that you love, something that you're good at, something you're passionate about. You're focused and clear on what you're doing. You're challenged, and you're up to the challenge. And time is going by, and you don't even notice, because you're so enraptured by what you're doing and how you're feeling, in the zone, in the flow. So keeping your eyes closed, zero in on that experience. What do you see? What are the colors and shapes that surround you? What do you hear? What are the sounds that envelop you? What are you touching in this space of joy and flow? What are you touching? And what do you smell? And what are some tastes that you associate? So keeping your eyes closed, embrace that feeling one more time as you take another deep breath. And now, please open your eyes. That feeling of happiness you just experienced, that's flow. Flow is when you're fully engaged and performing at your best. When you're at flow, you lose all track of time because you're lost in the love of your pursuit. And when you're at flow, you're at the peak of your creativity and your happiness. So remember, I did not invent that flow moment for you. It comes from your true experience, so you can trust it. I just pointed you in the right direction. Tapping into flow is one way to access your creativity. Let's explore a second way. Those good thoughts and feelings you just experienced in that short flow meditation, double your intensity and increase your frequency. 
Maybe you find your flow in the kitchen dancing to music. Take a dance class. Maybe you love coming up with new ways to hike up a mountain. Get out your hiking boots and hit the trails. Maybe you can't forget the memories of your high school rock band. Dig out that guitar and start playing again. This is the secret to accessing your creativity on demand. It's why David, a theater major in college, rekindled his creative spark at the peak of his legal career and began writing plays. Or Holly, a successful entrepreneur, tapped into her creative flow to replant her garden and make it more ecologically sustainable. Or Steve, stuck in midlife, who recalled his experience as president of the high school movie club and took a few filmmaking classes to get back into the flow. There's yet a third way that you can bring more creativity into your life, through life experiments. A life experiment is a process where you actively go out into the world and explore areas that make you feel happy and joyful. It may take time and commitment and trial and error to conduct those life experiments, but it's worth it because it's a direct pathway to your happiness and fulfillment. In my case, it took decades of exploration to go from stuck teenager to someone who lives and breathes curiosity and creativity. My entry point was the piano, which I played as the child and which I dropped when I went to law school. Years later, I returned to the piano to rekindle my creative spark, and I realized how important music and the arts were to me. So I embarked on a series of life experiments. First, I volunteered in the arts and found out how much I loved being in that space. And then I began to take on leadership roles in the arts organizations, first as a volunteer and then as a professional, where I honed my creative thinking skills. Within a few years and a near-death experience, my feet were firmly planted on the career path that I enjoy today. Yes, life experiments take commitment. The good news is that it provides a process for you to bring more creativity into your life. The process goes like this. First, select one to three areas that pique your curiosity and spark your joy. Next, explore and get out into the world. The key is to take action, remain open to new possibilities, and make course corrections as you bring more creative flow into your life. And third, reflect on your experience. Do more of what you love and discard anything that does not resonate. In essence, conducting life experiments is the creative act to solve the problem of how to live a better life. So the power is now in your hands. You can either lose energy by worrying about what to do with your life, or you can get busy experimenting and discover a more fulfilling version of yourself. You now have an entirely new way of thinking about creativity. You've experienced the wonders of flow. You know how to bring more creativity into your life. You've discovered that creativity is your pathway to self-mastery and fulfillment. And you don't have to stop there. Consider the creative ripple when you release your creativity out into the world. The chili contest in our small New England town is a perfect example. Our town had a problem. Our local charities needed to raise more money, so we started the chili contest. In the first year, the professional chefs offered up their chili, and we got to sample the usual suspects. Turkey, beef, vegetarian, hot, medium, and mild. It was fun and tasty, and the contest generated so much buzz that the home cooks wanted in on the action. So there became two contests, one for the professionals and one for the amateurs. And as more people participated in the chili contest, the participants in the chilies grew more and more creative with entries like beer and chipotle chili, Sasquatch chili, Texas red insanity. And as creativity flowed from the professionals to the amateurs, donations to our local charities grew as well. So consider your creative ripple as you activate your creativity and tap into your flow and share your creativity with the world. With more creative ideas in circulation, there will be more creative ideas and solutions, and the pathway to a better world 
becomes clearer. Together, we can make the world a better place. And it all starts with you.